For anyone doubting the rising talents in British Muay Thai and kickboxing, they only have to get to know a little bit more about the likes of George Jarvis, Daniel McGowan, John Haggerty, Evan Chase, The Barlow, both the younger brother, Ty, and his oldest sister, Amman Barlow. And you see that we've got from late teens going into early 20s and beyond, a great deal of seriously talented fighters, both male and female, from the UK that will undoubtedly be challenging on the world stage in the next five to 10 years, if not more. In this video, which is part three of the George Jarvis documentary, the 18 year old British Thai boxer himself is his forecast on exactly where the UK will be standing in many years to come with the likes of himself and many others. Support K1 via Patreon to produce more mini documentaries about combat sport athletes and subscribe on YouTube. Hadouken! To be honest, it's exciting. You know, it is exciting, especially when you put the range, you know, age gap from 18 up to 25. You know, imagine in 10 years when we're, you know, hitting 30, 30 plus, and then seeing the juniors come through as well. Even the juniors now are like, you know, different level. You go to the junior show, you like learning from them. Um, so it is exciting to see, you know, the sport in another 10 years. Like the sport's done a lot now, but I think, you know, the future holds a lot, you know, a lot more, a lot more, especially seeing the young talent come through. I think everyone's kind of clocked on, like, it's, you know, it's not all about the future now, but it's get, kind of getting to that point where, right, let's look at the future because, you know, all, all these young talents in 10 years, everyone's going to be talking about them. So if you can kind of, you know, get them involved now in 10 years, you can say, yeah, back, you know, back then I could, I was speaking to him, you know, I got him this fight, this fight. So I think it's quite important to start interacting with the youth now because in, you know, time to come, it's, it's going to be all about them, you know. And in this arena too. Generally, our, you know, our gym itself, our style is very tight style, you know, we're very tidy, keep the range, we're, you know, we've got a lot of good kickers in the gym, uh, obviously you've got Paolo who likes to, you know, put his head down, swing and knock people out, but generally I think everyone else kind of, you know, sits back, timing, you know, you pick your shots, so I think generally that's my kind of style, you know, like I don't rush anything, kind of wait for an opening, um, but obviously saying that you've got to adapt to your opponent, you know, if your opponent's coming at you 100 miles an hour, you ain't got time to kind of, you know, take the time, you've got, you've got to react. Um, so I think reactions is a, is a big, big part in fighting. You know, you can't, you can't plan your next shot, you've got to react. If someone hits you, hit them back. You know, if someone hits you, you've got to make, make a miss and hit them back. Um, so I, I wouldn't say I'll ever kind of plan, plan something that I'm going to do. I just kind of get in and see what happens. Um, but generally, I'm a kicker. You know, I like to keep that distance, kicking. If someone comes in, you know, into punching range, then you might obviously turn off and set up the kick. Um, obviously, you've got to adapt to your opponent. You, you've got, it depends what your opponent does. That right arm is going to get damaged, and there you go, he went to the head. Oh, beautiful move. You've got to be confident to fight, you know, someone come, letting someone come into you. You know, obviously, you've got to be ready to pick a shot. You've got to be ready to be brave and go for that shot. But, you know, it is a hard, it is a hard skill. Um, obviously, everything's easier hitting you going forward. But you know, when, when someone's coming at you with all this crazy stuff and you'll be able to pick a shot, you know, that, that is talent. That's, you know, it's good. That is talent. A body kick of uh, George Jarvis. Well, as you were speaking, another just landed straight on the, the well to that arm and the fluid has just kind of flooded the forearm now. It's no longer. Do you ever look, when you know the name of an opponent, do you ever YouTube them or do you just. I think it, you know, I'll be lying if I said I now have a quick look, you know, whether it's a picture just to see her face, put him on dartboard, start throwing some darts at him. But no, no, I'd, I'd, I'd never say I kind of like ever study the opponent because I think that's, it's not good for anyone, you know, when you get too drawn into what it's going to do. If you come out and starts doing something else, you're going to be like, you know, where's this come from? So I always have a little look, you know, see what, roughly what he, what he does generally in a fight, a little picture, but nothing really like, you know, studying or anything like that. Would you like to put Jake Purdy's face on the dartboard? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's all right, he's all right. You know, we obviously had a good fight um, back in May. Uh, obviously, we love a rematch with him. But, you know, I'm in no rush to fight them boys. I've, you know, like, like I said, I'm only 18 years old. I've got plenty of time to, to get rematch with Jake, you know, fight Craven, all, all them boys. I, I will fight all them boys, but in good time. You know, I'm in no rush. It was a big step up, it was a big step up, but I was confident, you know, in my abilities. Dad was confident um, and, you know, it paid off. It was a good fight. There wasn't much in it. Um, I didn't 
really fight the right fight. I let him keep, keep coming in and you know doing what he wanted to do. Um, but it'll be it'll 100% be different next time. 100%. You mentioned Joe Craven, don't you? Yep, Joe Craven. He's grown loads. Yep, he's done really well this year. He put a big name out for himself. Um, fought in Yoko what twice. Uh, current UK number one, he beat beat Purdy as well. Um, so you know he's smashing it, but. You know, I, I want to fight all them boys. I want, I want to be in the mix with the best. And, and the good thing about fighting them boys, you've got nothing to lose. Mm. If you lose, you know, I lost the UK number one. It's, it's, it's nothing. Obviously, if I beat him, perfect. But, you know, I, I want to fight all them boys, and I will. I always wanted to do Thai boxing properly as a professional since, you know, I was very young, five, six years old, like first fights. But I never thought I'd take it as seriously as I did, especially when I went through the phase, kind of at 13, 14. Not losing love for it, but kind of losing a bit of interest. Obviously, you know, you find new things as a kid. Um, going out with your mates, going parties, you know, n normal stuff like kids do as teenagers. And then obviously when hitting 16, 17, I fell in love with it again. And that's when I kind of clocked, wow, well, this, this is what I want to do, you know. And obviously working in the gym makes that dream a lot more, a lot more achievable. I've seen him grow up, you know, he's, he's always been a great kid. Obviously a little bit cheeky sometimes, as, as, as they all are. You know, he's, he's, he's a great kid, you know, pr pr proud of him like now as a man, really. He's, um, he's, he's been amazing, he's always been amazing to, to be around and to have around. It's really good to have him around. He was a little kid, when I was training for fights and that, it was, it was just funny to, you know, to have him and see him train. And obviously, now as a man, to be training him to his fights and, and see him train and that is, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be any prouder, mate. It's absolutely great. Easy stuff, isn't it, for YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> so Muay Thai has, you know, created a career for myself, um, you know, working in the gym because of Muay Thai, teaching people because of Muay Thai, um, currently doing, you know, personal training level three, you know, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't working in the gym, you know, so tra training Muay Thai alone and fighting doesn't, you know, you can't, you can't really make a career out of it, but the stuff that comes with it, you know, you, you can, um, obviously you have to work and you can't just train and fight, you do have to work, but because I have, done more time, it has opened up doors, you know, for a career around it. Yeah, you've adapted your lifestyle. Yeah, adapted my lifestyle around Muay Thai. And obviously, every, like, Muay Thai ain't the best, you know, financial. Um, but I'm, I'm not really in it for the money, you know, I just do it because I love the sport. Um, and I would love to kind of see Muay Thai grow in that kind of, you know, that kind of department. But at the moment, you know, the easy option is to go, you know, MMA, K1, because that's where the money is. But like I said, it's, it's not really the money that, you know, draws me to it. It's, it's just the love for the sport. Um, and right now, I'm, I'm not interested in anything else but Muay Thai, really.